Today I'm going to walk through our 2.1 speech analysis and the way that this is going to work and how you'll do it with your group. So when you get in, you'll see like an empty table. It'll say like student one, student two, student three, whatever. So you can see here's my team. We each picked a color that we're going to work in. And you can see Yoakum's already completed it, but nobody else has. I will say the earlier you complete this, the easier it's going to be because once people start highlighting and taking things, um, you can't take them, so you have to find something else. So it's easier to do it sooner rather than later. So the first thing obviously you want to do is read through the speech and kind of understand what it's talking about. So for this speech, it's a speech by Gandhi, and he is worried about um, people taking over and um, forcing a specific religion. So he is going to start a, um, a hunger strike, basically, where he fasts um, or doesn't eat until um, peace has been made. Um, and he... he wants people to remain peaceful, basically. That's Gandhi's big thing. So I read this speech and I kind of understand it now. So now I'm ready to start on the tasks or the questions at the bottom. So the first thing um, I have to do is figure out what the author's purpose is in the speech. How do you know? Answer in a color below. So I can see Katrina has already um, answered this. I think the author's purpose is to convince people to join a peaceful protest. I say this because he talks about beginning his hunger strike and how if he dies, they must carry on without him. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, I'm not sure if he's super talking about other people doing it as well. So as I like read through this, I'm going to put in my own answer, but I'm going to answer in my own color. So I was blue. I'm going to say the author's purpose is to demand peace and avoid fighting between religions. He is going on a hunger strike to inspire people to stop fighting. So that's my reason and this is my why. Okay, so now I've answered both parts of this question. Next thing I have to do is underline and label a time when our rhetorical devices, remember that's our logos, pathos, ethos, are used in your color. Let's see what Katrina said. Oh, she said, um, death for me would be a glorious deliverance rather than I should be a helpless witness of the destruction of India, Hinduism, Sikhism, and Islam. She said this is ethos because it is talking about higher powers and religion. So that works for me. So now I have to find um, like some logos, pathos, or ethos. So I'm going to look through here and... I'm going to say, let's see here. Um, I would say right here, it says, I yearn for heart friendship between the Hindus, Sikhs, and Muslims. That to me is very emotional. I think that he's making a very emotional plea. So I'm going to turn this blue and I'm going to underline it and then I'm going to explain I think this is ethos because or sorry mm -hmm, pathos because it is talking about his emotions and how he yearns for friendship okay so there's my example Next, highlight and label a time where a persuasive technique is used. If you're reading this or watching this before we've done the persuasive techniques, you can skip this one and come back to it. If you're watching this after we've done our persuasive techniques notes, then we can go ahead and find an example. And I saw one earlier when I was looking for um, my... Um, Logos, pathos, or ethos. I just have to find it again. Um, actually, let's see what Katrina said. Oh, even the Sardar, who is a, a leader, whom humor and, and the joy that humor nev gives never desert, was no exception this time. This is endorsement because it's talking about someone well-known in India. Okay. 
So let's take a look. Mm, I think I'm going to say let no friend or foe if there be want be angry with me. Because in my mind, um, so this is, oops, I didn't want to change the color. I wanted to highlight this one. This is name calling. He is saying you are a friend or you are a foe. So he's kind of doing both sides of name calling here. He's saying, and in a good way, like, oh, if you're on my side, you're, you're our friends. Or if you're against him, then you're his foe, right? Okay, so we highlighted our persuasive technique. Bold where you see parallel structure used and changed it to your color. And she didn't find any parallel structure, but I saw one earlier when I was reading. One fast for health sake under laws governing health. One fast as a penance for wrong do done and felt as such. So I'm going to change this to my color. And I'm going to bold it because we have one fast one fast, so he's kind of listing almost those two reasons and they match up. Now, quote what you think the thesis of the speech is in your color. So she says, the destruction is certain if Pakistan ensures no equality of status and security of life and property for all professing the various faiths of the world and if India copies her. Only then Islam dies with the two Indias, not in the world. But Hinduism and Sikhism have no world outside India. So what he's saying here is, you know, if if we don't let people have these various faiths, first of all, um, destruction is certain, so things are going to be destroyed. Islam dies within the two Indias because it's practiced outside of India, but Hinduism and Sikhism are almost exclusive to India, so if India stops allowing that, then it's just going to be disallowed everywhere, and that's a big problem. So I totally agree with this. I think that that is definitely, um, definitely the thesis. So I'm going to go ahead, and in my color, I'm going to paste, oop, I'm going to paste that. And remember, when you're working on this, you're totally allowed to work with your friends. Like, that's okay. You're a team. You work together. However, that doesn't just mean that you guys can always have all the same answers. Sometimes it's okay. Like in this, I think this is really right on, so I want to I wanna match up with her. But, like up here, I, I didn't think that she was 100% on, so I have my own answer. Finally, quote, a powerful moment from the speech. Trina really liked when he said fasting is his last resort in place of the sword, his or others, which is him saying, like, we don't want to fight each other. We want to fast. And that's a last resort still. It's an extreme thing to do, but it's, it's instead of fighting each other. And I think that's really, really cool. Um, a really cool part up here would be... Ooh, up here. At once I saw I had to be in Delhi and do or die. There's a calm brought about by prompt military and police action, but there's a storm within the breast and it may break forth any day. So he's talking about um, how he knew that this is a big emergency and like, you know, they might be able to subdue us for now with military action, but people are, are unrestful and it's going to cause a big problem. It's going to blow up in your face anyway. So now I've done my part of this. So Katrina and I are both done. I can come up here and say that I finished this. And then Reeves and Spain are going to have to hop on and do it when they can. Of course, we're here to help them and they can see our examples, but they won't be able to take them necessarily. So um, that's kind of how this is going to work. If you have any questions, obviously, please let me know. And remember that you're all working on the same copy. So somebody needs to make one copy and send it to your group.